So, uh, hello to everybody. Welcome to this, um, this workshop. Uh, my name is uh, is uh, Jérôme. Uh, so I, I'm uh, I'm a French uh, philosophy uh, practitioner, and I've been uh, practicing uh, this kind of uh, uh, I don't dare to call it Socratic dialogue because it's not uh, the same as uh, what you know as Socratic dialogue, but it's a form of um, it's a form of critical thinking, uh, which is uh, pursued uh, uh, during uh, real dialogues. Okay, so the main uh, the main setup is the philosophical consultation, which I do with uh, individual clients uh, all over the world, and also uh, collective consultation. So you might see it as a collective consultation, <coughs> um, but basically uh, just see it as a um, as a, an exercise on uh, working your, uh, on training your thinking skills. Okay, most of it are uh, basically it's uh, deep deepening the, the thinking. It's problematizing, which means uh, seeing problems, asking questions, uh, making objections, and um, conceptualizing, which is producing using concepts, uh, recognizing them. Um, one might be uh, quite specific is that uh, in this kind of setup, we also work on people's attitudes. So try to imagine yourself as being your own students, uh, because I do this with adults, but also with children. So yeah, let's let's take it as a game. Uh, you might be a bit uh, disturbed or uncomfortable, <laughs> <laughs> because it's quite unusual to be. Um, to be questioned uh, in public by somebody you don't know and ask you sometimes you know deep questions about yourself, you might say, "Wow, well, I'm not coming for here, for that here." Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's it's the name of the game. Uh, it's a bit like uh, Socrates' friend said that uh, whatever the subject you're dealing with, Socrates, uh, at the end of the day, you always come up, come up uh, with a, uh, let's say um, uh, put put your soul to the trial. You see. Uh, Expressing what's the meaning of your life, what you what you're here for, what you did with your life, you know. So and the, this might be a bit um, a bit horrific, <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, we will survive. <laughs> Usually, people do survive, so it's good news. We don't need to drink the hemlock. When, uh, when <laughs> no, uh, I hope so. I mean, if you can, but it's interesting what you do because there's a there's a form of what we call dying to yourself. Um, when, you, when, you, when you are questioned by somebody like Socrates, uh, you have to die with yourself. Metaphorically means um, to, to, to give up your opinions. You know, because of course, opinion is the, the worst evil for thinking. Okay? Uh, so of course we, we have opinions, but uh, we want to build them, we want to construct them, uh, we want them to be based on reason, uh, if possibly on objective facts, that's why I brought to you a, a little text here, which I give you as a, an example of, of a, a starting point of a, of a work, so if you might uh, distribute it. So as we only have one hour, we are pretty... Uh, <coughs> rushed by time, so I will not make a conference or speak. I will just talk as soon. Uh, so this is a... Yeah. So before you start reading, I uh, just give it this, this text as a, a, an uh, exercise uh, uh, example, uh, as a work on interpretation based on a, on a text, on a story. And um, so you, you can use this with your with your students uh, as an exercise, and I just sh I would just show you how I would do it myself. And maybe you can uh, you can try to uh, to take some some good tricks about it. So, so what I propose to you is that uh, you you read the story, uh, and then uh, you will take a, um, a piece of paper, and I, I will ask you one of the ten questions. Uh, I don't know yet so which one. But just read it, and I would have decided by now. Any any questions or or comments or critics already?
Okay, and w w once you finish the, uh, to read, you will answer the question number five. Why does the important man prefer obligations to happiness? So you give one written uh, clear answer, clear as possible, and with one argument. So one argument, uh, why are you saying that? What, what allows you to say that? And uh, preferably you underline the part of the text. You, you underline the part of the text um, on which your, your answer is based. Okay? Who, who did not uh, understand? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Oh, just here we try to raise our hands a bit like kids, you know, and it's a bit uh, childish. <laughs> So don't write an essay, huh? it's just uh, one sentence should be enough. <laughs> Finish, you put your pencil down. So that you know. Good. So, uh, Mich Michel, mm -hmm. how, how much uh, time do you need? Still five seconds. <coughs> it's pretty, pretty fast. And what about uh, what's your name? Ah, yours. Yours. How much time do you need? Zero seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Very efficient question. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, who would like to, uh, to propose uh, his uh, answer? Raise your hand. Oh, you just keep your hand raised so that we, we have a... Okay, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Could you just pick someone, please? Neville. <laughs> okay, Neville. What is your answer? Um, I think he believes obligations are more important than what he wants as a person. So, and I think these obligations are imposed on him by culture or society. And my argument would be that if he didn't care for his father, for example, the society would see him as a bad person, which is worse for him than what he as a person wants. Okay. Now, we all see that uh, there's a lot of words in what you say. Uh, is it possible just that you, you read us what you wrote? Yes, that's what I wrote. Okay. But because you, you noticed that when you told it, you did not look at your piece of paper. You notice? Uh, I think so. Yeah? Well, so is that possible that it would be a little different between what you said and what was written? Uh, yes. Yeah? Okay. So 
Could you? Yes. Uh, he believes obligations are more important than what he as a person wants. These obligations are impo imposed by culture or our society. Arguments. If he didn't care for his father, people would think badly of him. Okay. Now, uh, would you have um, one concept, which is one, just one word, it's, it's called uh, conceptualization, just one word yeah. as a synthesis for your idea? likely that uh, you have too many ideas in one sentence, right? Okay. Uh, how would you call this problem? Um, overthinking? Overthinking, right? So can we say that Neville, uh, Neville overthinks? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, it's a bit strange because I'm asking you on the third person, yes. but it's, it's a process I do just to help the people to get out of themselves. Because usually they, uh, you know, they're a bit uh, insecure, like uh, the woman uh, showed us uh, this morning. Uh, so this is a trick I use to, uh, yes. So could, could, could we say that you, uh, that you overwork, uh, overthink? Yes. Right? You, you, do that, you do that often? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why? Why do you do that? Um, so I don't look super in front okay. of you don't look stupid, right? And how do you call somebody who doesn't want to look stupid? Do you think you're stupid? Uh, no. <laughs> so so how, how do you call someone who does not want to look stupid? How is he, this person? He might be insecure. He might be insecure. He might be or he's very likely insecure? Uh, very likely. Very likely, okay. So we say that you're insecure, right? So does it make an echo to your existence? The maker? An echo? Echo? Uh, Just insecurity. Um, um, well, is, is it a past or maybe? In, well, is it a recurrent phenomenon that never is insecure? Or yes. Is, yes? Yeah. Okay. Did, did you already uh, identify this, uh, this phenomenon in your life? Yes. Yes. Do you like it as it is, or you would like to change it? Um, I think I've made progress already, on yeah. it, so it's already changing little by little. Okay. But in some situations, it's still okay. Yeah. And and would you um, about the overthinking? What would you advise yourself to do? Mm. <coughs> Try to keep it simple. Yeah, good, good advice. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Well, for example, I give you an advice to synthesize. You give a concept. Yes. Because if you have a difficulty to find one concept, it's likely that your sentence is too, uh, too complicated. And I, I, I don't know if you're all a teacher, but I advise you to uh, invite you to do this also with your, uh, with your uh, students, so that you know, they, they don't get overcomplicated and they, they feel uh, more comfortable that uh, with just one word that uh, might be enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, who understood, who did not understand Neville's uh, answer? Raise your hand. So, yeah, wh while I'm questioning, that's why I'm making the video, uh, to try to see what questions I'm asking, because you know, I did not answer who, who understood. I'd rather go to the who did not understand, see? So who did not understand what uh, Neville said? Well, I, I think I understood, but I couldn't repeat it if I had to anymore. But could you formulate it with your own words? <coughs> I think I understood it at the moment, at the moment itself, yeah. but now I will uh, Michel. Yeah, Michel. Yeah. Michel. Yeah. Do you complicate your life? <laughs> yeah, I will say you can see it's less. Okay. Well, just to try to, to just answer my question. Okay. It makes your life easier. Do you, do you um, are you able to, to reproduce the meaning uh, with your own words? No. Okay, so that probably means that you did not understand, right? Mm. Yeah. So just 
tell us. I did not understand. I did not understand. Are you a teacher? Um, not yet. Okay. Do you think your students will have a problem admitting that they did not understand something? Uh, yes. Why? They don't want to look stupid. Well, okay. But you know, it's a very widespread uh, <coughs> uh, disease. <laughs> the fact that you don't want to look stupid. Well, I invite you uh, also with, with your um, with your students to from, to reconcile with stupidity. Well, you know, stupidity doesn't kill you. Uh, it's it's even uh, probably a bit over overrated. What's the problem of looking stupid? I mean, indeed, it might it might be more the problem of the people judging you stupid than of yourself. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry, I'm so terribly late, so I'm looking for a madman workshop. The madman? Yeah. Well, this could be here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, it's not here. Okay. Alinda. Alinda. Uh, but okay. you have an uh, info on the. Yeah. And right. there you get your papers and where you're supposed to be. And oh. the okay. But I'll be sure we'll order something in the Okay. <laughs> Doesn't last long. So. Um, now, well, as uh, other people um, should have understood, well, I invite you to ask some, somebody to, to reformulate uh, Neville's idea. Uh, okay, um, Michael? Yeah. So what did Neville say for, uh, for Michel? <coughs> that, uh, culture um, is the, the basic of the, um, the way the uh, man uh, behaves. Culture where he is living. Culture is what, sorry? The basic yeah. uh, for the behavior of uh, this man. Of this man, culture, okay. Now, Neville will ask you uh, a skill of uh, making a judgment. <laughs> An educated one. So do you think um, uh, Mi uh, Michael uh, Let's say interpreted your your idea, your idea uh, right, uh, roughly. Yes. yes? yes. Okay. So you you take it. You take it. Mm. Why mm. not? Well, you know, it's strange because you say I did not understand. There's, there comes a sorry, what's your name again? Mikael. Mikael explained to you, and it's validated by the author himself, and you say no. You seem to be a, a little bit nervous now. Okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to my question. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that you seem to be a little nervous? Yes, no, or you don't know? I don't know. Okay. If I tell you, you, you seem a bit nervous. Do you agree? You, I mean, you trust me? Yes. Okay. You know, <laughs> there was a little hesitation between, uh, before you said yes, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think I think about you of this hesitation? Rather that you trust people or you don't trust people? Sorry, I don't trust people. Yes. Do you think when I'm watching you, or by the way, other people watching, what would they think that Michel, uh, Michel, 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 is he rather trust a trust uh, a trusting a trusting person, or he doesn't trust people too much? That I don't trust people. Yeah. Why? Because I see you nervous. Okay, but you know, could you be nervous but still trusting people? Yes, it's possible. Okay. Well, the reason I was telling you this is because, you see, um, you did not understand what Neville said, right? Mm -hmm. Now you had Mikael making a speech, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Neville confirmed. You say, yeah, that's what I said, basically. Mm -hmm. And this, and you, you said to uh, Mikael, no, 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 that's not it. Do you see a problem in this uh, attitude? No, I didn't say that. No, just, listen to my question, Michel. <laughs> Just listen to the question. Do you see a problem or not for you? There is no problem. No, I don't think there is. Okay. But do you want to see one? Because, you know, problematizing is very important. Do you want to see a problem? Yes, sure. Okay. So who would like to, to show a problem uh, to what Michel said uh, to Michel? Raise your hand. And you, you might want to look at people. What, what's your name? Arina. 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 Well, if you think that you didn't understand, 
the, the statement, then you will not be able to judge whether his answer is right or wrong. And because you have an opinion that it's not <coughs> what Neville said, you should not be able to say whether it's right or wrong. That, that's a contradiction. Say, but we should. Uh, but do you want to fight or what? <laughs> do you want to defend yourself? Okay. That's what I think is the problem. Okay, now, do you, do you understand what uh, Irina said? Yes, I understood. Yes. Okay. Do you agree with her? I agree with her. Yes. Okay, well, you can say thank you, Irina. Thank you, I agree with you. <laughs> now, you see that it's a bit unfair to say, uh, no, no, it's not this, because uh, the first reaction that you had is, is that I did not understand. So if you did not understand, well, you welcome what people tell you. Yes or no? Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. So why did, did, did you say to Michael, no, it's not this? That was not what I intended to say. Okay. So I intended to actually, what I meant to say was, actually I wanted to ask him to repeat it because what Michael had said, because I didn't really, because I didn't really grasp it. This, it was just a question for clarification. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that I didn't agree with his interpretation of um, Neville's statement. Okay, so did you remember what he said? <laughs> Not anymore now, after that. Okay, he, Michael said that uh, the, the, the important man uh, <coughs> uh, made his choice based on cultural background, something like that. No? Yes. yes. He said, is some, did you understand this? Yes. Yeah? I understand. Do you agree with him? Do I agree with him with this? Oh, you see, just the, the way that you're answering, it shows a problem of trust. Do you realize that? Mm, no. Okay. But do you agree with me, or you want to you want to check out with the group if it shows a problem of trust? You trust me, or yeah, I trust you. Okay. Now, is that a de do you agree that a lacking of trust is a bit like a like a disease? I don't think we can say that. No. Okay. So, you, would you qualify, qualify the? Uh, how would you qualify the lack of trust? Rather, uh, it's something positive, or it's something useful, or it's something negative, uh, deterrent. How would you qualify it? Hmm. It can be useful sometimes. But yeah, but usually, is it no, good? Usually, it's bad. Right? Usually, it's bad. Okay. Now, is that a, I call it a disease, but it's just my word. Okay. Do you want to transmit this, this, this disease to your uh, students? No. no. The problem is that that's what, exactly what you're going to do. With. Mm -hmm. or, or like if you were a parent, you would transmit uh, this uh, lack of trust to your children. Right? And this is where uh, the exercise, uh, you, I mean, <coughs> to practice this exercise with your students, you yourself have to, you know, to work on yourself, and to trust. You will look stupid against uh, in front of your students sometimes. <coughs> yeah, but this is the, the price to pay. Okay. So, so do you take it or what he said? Do I think whether it's true what he said? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Well, I give you a simple advice. Just take it. Make your life easier. <laughs> Difficult, no? Difficult mm -hmm. to take it. To agree with him. Okay, are you confused now, Michel? Yes, I'm confused. <laughs> yes. Okay, why? Why are you confused? I'm thinking that you're asking me just to agree with what he said to make my life easier, even if I'm not sure about it, the truth of what he said. You make your life complicated? Yes, that? I make my life complicated. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have a, live a simple life? <laughs> <laughs> I do want to live a simple <laughs> life. Don't you say, okay, I, I take what the guy is giving us. Mm -hmm. I mean, the author confirmed it. You don't trust the author? You don't trust him? Mm -hmm. it's, it's strange to do it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, so, um, you like our little dialogue? I think it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, really. Romeo, do you want to marry me? 
Well, Juliet, I think it's interesting. Is it? <laughs> Do you think uh, Juliet is going to the marriage? No, no, no maybe she, if she is a philosopher. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're a tricky guy, right? Mm. Huh? Mm. But now, uh, my question for Nedo, uh what's uh, from the text? Where, where from the text can you uh, answer the basic? Um, it's not really in the text, I think. It's oh, yes. it's not really in the text. Well, so we have a problem. Sorry. Yeah, so, so, what, yeah, so where is it? To in the second, in the first part, to tell the, uh, the master what he has to do. He starts with um, saying he has to bury his father because he just died. He has to what? Sorry? Yeah, uh, which, which line is it? First, that? it's the, um, the eighth line. First, my father just ah. died and I have to take care of his funeral. Uh, okay, I have to take care of his funeral. Yes. Okay. And this, uh, this is related to the cultural, <coughs> the cultural reason. I think so. Yes. So what is the link with culture? Um, I think that uh, because the relation between a father and a son mm -hmm. that is something that is cultural, so it's very important in most cultures. So well, do you think when you, a relationship with a father and a son, uh, how, what kind of relationship is that? Um, I think it's supposed to be a caring relation where the father what? cares. A caring, caring and relation. Then, um, educating. Mm -hmm. So the father has a bond with the son, and the son has a bond with the father. Mm -hmm. The son starts his life most of the time in company with his father, so they connect. Um, and this relation makes it important for him to have respect for his father. And okay, but all this that you're saying, where do you see it in the story? That's not in the story. Okay. So, imagine you have a student uh, telling you this story. Would you, would you say, wow, well, it's a very good answer, or would you say, it's, well, it's rather over-interpretation? I think it's hard to see this or which just, story. Just shut your yeah. answer my question. I know it's a stupid question. I don't think it's over interpretation. Okay, so you think it's it's fair it's reasonable to, to say that? Mm -hmm. You to, to to deduce that from the text. Yes. Okay. So let me just write your answer. Okay. <clears throat> 
Now, for, for, you, for whom it's not clear, this uh, hypothesis, I call it a hypothesis, uh, <coughs> just for uh, people who are a bit uh, insecure, they feel more secure, so oh, it's only a hypothesis. So, so who, for whom it's not clear? Region. Yes? <laughs> What's the problem? What's not clear? Well, I don't think culture can tell you yeah. something. Uh, okay. Or is that not, maybe that's not a question, is the question is not, is okay. the meaning clear, not the formula? My mission, try to make your, do, do you have a, a question for, uh, for Nedel? Or do you have an objection to something? Or you think something has, has no sense? Something does not make any sense here. Yes, I would say that. It's, it doesn't make sense. Right? Yes, that's what okay. I would say. <coughs> but, uh, okay, you don't understand the expression culture tells him, right? Yes, I do understand. You, well, you do understand? And I think I understand, I understand, it, yes. So you change your mind? Mm. I understand what is... But did you change your mind or you still don't understand? I understand. So yeah. change your mind. Because before you said I did not understand. Now you say I understand. <coughs> no, I'm, I'm a very basic guy. Yeah, I okay, I understand. I changed my mind. Okay. Now, so you have another problem. Mm. Well, are you confused again? Uh, yes, a little bit. Okay. Mm. Well, you know, there's a problem in uh, giving the speech to confused people because they are likely to uh, drag them, to drag us into their confusion. <laughs> and you will see that with your students. <laughs> Might be a bit unfair, but are you ready to make something clear? S sorry, what do you mean? Well, do you have a... Uh, what, what, what do you want to, to tell us? Well, for the moment, for the moment, I will just continue. I understand, uh, I will understand the question, so... Well, I understand the statement, so... I don't understand. Do you have a problem? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Who can explain to you? No. The, what do you, I did not hear. For the moment, I would what? I would just propose that we continue. Okay, we continue. Uh, so, okay. So, so we continue. Yeah, because so, so, who, um, who has um, a question or, or who has um, an objection uh, for uh, Neville? Yes, uh, uh, Arina. Well, um, uh, Rina, do you have a question or uh, so you understand? I what? have. I, I do understand what's here. Oh, Rina. <coughs> <laughs> no, sir. Okay. I, you have to, uh, to breathe. You know, that's okay. But it's just phrase. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that a? You know what an objection is, right? Yeah. Yes. You you know if you ha rather have an objection or a question for Nedo or something else. I. I think I have an objection. Okay, so what is your what is your objection? What is wrong or what is false here? Um, I think that these uh, statements are not derived from the text. Okay, so th there would be some what I would call an overinterpretation. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, which one? The argument. I think the, the whole concept is uh, based on information that is not okay. stated in the text. Now, yeah. do you know what you're going to ask him then? <coughs> um, well, the, this question was already asked by you. Uh, from and which part of the text? Obviously, I was not very uh, efficient. <laughs> okay, yeah. but so I'll ask him again. Well, because I don't see any proof of uh, your statement in the text. But you know, you notice this is not a question? Oh yeah, the not a question. You're right. Um, <laughs> um, would you please point uh, the... Um, but you know, uh, you don't have to be that polite. You know? Okay. But, you know, make, make your life easier for just one hour. That's uh, fair enough. Um, <laughs> could you show exactly words that uh, 
through cultural aspects in text. Um, I assumed from the words sage and Buddha. Sage and sage Buddha. In the first line of the text. And yeah, the and the sage. Fifth. Yes. Um, I assumed it was the oriental culture, because Buddha is mostly Buddha, Buddha is from, from India, right? India, yeah. Okay. And sages are also a concept that's used in those cultures, so I assumed it took place in that culture. From the text. And so what? So. Okay. Do, do you think he answered your question? Um, he did answer my question, but Buddha. Uh, so do you global have world uh, is not necessarily. Irene, Irene. Yes. <laughs> Uh, no, Irina, didn't you should breathe. You see, you, you, yes. you, look, you look tense. Okay. Do you, do you, do you yeah. breathe? No, it was a busy week. That's that's all. <laughs> Irina. Well, yeah. Irina. You know, you have to make a, a little work on yourself because you, you're going to stress your children, your, your, children your, your students. You know, you're going to stress them out. Okay. Okay. Just, just to relax and. Do, um, do you, do you think he... Uh, so you have an objection. Yes. So you, you think uh, he gave you an answer, a proof, but you have an objection. Yes. An objection on what? Um, I, uh, what I do accept is that uh, the word uh, that helped, uh, that derived an answer uh, is Buddha. Um, but this is in a very close community. Um, in, uh, in, in the world nowadays, you can see Buddha everywhere. It's not necessarily in one country. So I see it. So wh wh what do you accuse him of doing? This uh, wrong and never got. What is his, uh, his crime? His interpretation, but now I think that I also interpret it in my way as I see it broader. It's again then my interpretation of the word. Okay, you think it's clear now? No. Okay, so start again. Um, I think both of us interpret interpret the text mm. in our uh, from our point of view. Yeah, and is there a one which is better than the other one? No. Ah, okay, so you equal. We don't know. Okay. Now, who uh, who thinks? Uh, raise your hand. Who thinks Neville um, made, a, let's say, a, a good uh, demonstration from the text, uh, uh, supporting his uh, argument about culture? Who think he showed us that? Yeah, we can infer this from the text. Raise your hand. Okay, and who thinks he did not? Okay. Well, we have a problem in it, no? And what about you? I think uh, he did uh, make a good... Uh, he didn't make it. <coughs> but a larger majority thinks he did not. Okay. So what did he do? Um, I still stand by my interpretation. Okay. Now raise your hand again. Uh, who thinks he did not uh, do the job? Raise your hand. And never ask somebody, why, why do you think I did not do the job? Um, somebody who did not do the job? I think yes. um, Because I think uh, you did not prove the point because um, the element that you took out of the text does not seem to me to prove that point. Which was sage, right? Sage, yes. And uh, the mention of Buddha. Yes. And uh, why not? Because for sage, and, you know, sage does not refer to any oriental culture. I would say Buddha is widespread, as has been said already. So I agree with that. And um, because I have my own fragment of text that I would use. But when you say Buddha, uh, you, you mean Buddha is the real? Uh, oh no, yeah, sorry, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, okay. So. In one in one sentence, what would be your uh, your objection? My objection is not against his thesis, but against the proof. Yes, and which is that the inferences from the text do not 
prove it. Okay. So do you agree that what you say that it's about the Buddha <coughs> it's it's too widespread, it could be a lot of other things and that it's not it's not enough as a proof. Do you agree? I think it's a possibility, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, are you a bit uh, how do you say in English in nitty picky? Uh, Does it make sense? Nitty picky? Yes. Yes? Sometimes nitpicky. Nitpicking. Nitpicking. Are you a bit nitpicking? Um nitpicking is uh tatillon. The, 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 the person in French would say, uh, couper les cheveux en quatre. Oh, yeah. Cut the, the hair in two. Okay. Are you a bit like this? Uh, no. No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. But, you, but see, well, okay. So, uh, do you think it's enough? You have enough proof? Um, no, maybe not. Try I to improve your proof. Um, well, I'm It's always an interpretation, so I don't think I can be well, you know, proof. If you could not transmit us your insecurity <laughs> or your skepticism like the lady said this morning, you know, we just want to say if you, if you have some, some better or some more solid thing from the text. Um, I will try. So we have uh, the words sage, master, Buddha, like I said before. Um, second, Other uh, possible explanation could be the ceremony, I think. He was asked uh, to speak, where the master is asked to speak. Um, and so what? What about the ceremony? In a way, it is written. Which way? Um, where he is... Can you read the words? Yes, I will try. Um, I recommend <coughs> him to recite the name of the blessed. And then he starts with the rest of his... So what does it prove? It's a way of speaking that is again used in Eastern culture according to the, the blessed, I think you can talk about Buddha and that's true, you, you hear the name Buddha all over the world. Uh, probably Buddha the blessed But is something. Do you think that uh, this Buddhist culture uh, Preaches uh, obligations over happiness. Uh, no. Well, but then you have a problem. But I think. Oh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Do you agree that you're pretending that uh, uh, the important man prefers obligation to happiness? Yes. Because he's following his his culture. I am. Um. Are you pretending this? Uh, yes. This would mean that this, in this culture. Uh, it's more obligations, it's more important than happiness. Forget about happiness, obligations, too. <laughs> yeah? Yes. So, but do you think it's the case? Do you think, are you ready to prove that in Buddhism, well, obligations is more important? Or no, it really doesn't fit. Um, if I can make... No, 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 just not make a speech. Do you think, mm -hmm. does it fit or no, do you have a problem? No, Buddhism isn't about obligations. Okay, so now you have to explain to us, because it's, yes. it's a bit strange. Because Buddhism is part of Eastern culture, but it isn't only Buddhism. There are other streams in Eastern culture as well, like um, Shinto, if it's about China, possibly. Um, and I think the worship of parents and of um, forefathers <coughs> is in general, in all Eastern culture, important. We have to, to speak to everybody. Okay. Yeah. It's in general, in Eastern culture, important. And Buddhism is only part of it. And it's not only exclusive to Eastern culture, it's all over the world, like you said. But I put some things together by... Yeah, right. Okay, you think you've been clear? I hope so. No, and that's not my question. Uh, yes. You know, hope is for church. <laughs> yes? Okay. Now, who understood Neville? And who agrees with Neville's uh, argument that it's, it's a fairly good argument uh, to support so that, uh, uh, in this case, uh, the culture is rather about obligations? Who thinks it did not? It keeps your hand raised. Never ask somebody to ask uh, Carrie. Why do you think I did not see? Catherine. Um, I 
think you can't uh, derive um, the thought um, the e in the Eastern culture um, parents are more important mm -hmm. um, I don't think it has something to do with um, it's not an argument for putting um, obligations before happiness okay Why? so how would you judge his argument do you think that there is no argument do you think that it's uh, incomplete? Do you think it's incoherent? Do you think it's vague? Do you think it's absurd? Do you think it's contradictory? Because you help or you respect your parents, that you can't be happy. Well, you change your argument now. Yeah. Or you did change it. You didn't say that before, did you? Didn't I? Okay, but well, okay. Um, so, well, you have the right to change. Huh? So, so this is your your objection, right? Yes. So again, it's not because you uh, take respect. care. Yeah. Okay, but does he say that uh, we can't be, that uh, they can't be happy? No. So you, your objection will be uh, yes. It, uh, yeah. So last chance. Um. Or we give up. There is nothing in the text, I think, even not culture, that says that you have to, that your culture uh, pushes you to um, put obligations uh, before your happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the, uh, what do you say, the, uh, the ceremony? Yes. Is that some, some kind of obligation? Or no? It's like for fun. Ceremony where the the sash uh, stopping that ceremony. The master. The master ceremony. I, I don't think it says anything about culture. Sorry, uh, I'm confused now. Uh, what, what, what 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 ceremony? Uh, the, yeah. the funeral. When he died, the funeral. Yeah, the funeral. Yeah, the funeral. Yeah. The yes. funeral of the. The master. The important uh, one. The, 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 the important yeah. yeah. You think it has to do with obligation? No. No. It has to do with what? Do you agree that uh, a, cer a funeral ceremony uh, is, a, is some kind of rite? A rite? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A rite? Yeah. Is it right? No. So what is it? That's, yeah, that indeed is something uh, cultural. Yeah, okay, a bit more precise. You think we just do it for fun? Mm -hmm. Well, what are, what are we doing this for? A funeral? <laughs> no, <Yeah>. a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a funeral. Well, the ceremony uh, within the funeral, all this... Uh, Apparatus. To, um, uh, to bury someone? Yeah, well, that's, are you a very pragmatic, pragmatic woman, huh? <laughs> bury is the <laughs> final <laughs> result. <laughs> yeah, but why do we, uh, you know, gather people, make some speeches, 
dress in, uh, in black or red or whatever, or do all those things? Ah, right. um, because we find it important to... Um, yeah, but why do we find it important? Who, who would like to, to propose something to Catherine? Raise your hand. Please. <laughs> yes. Um, yours? Because we feel obliged to the deceased. Is that right, Catherine? So we feel obliged to the deceased. That's not my no. Easy, right? Or no, you don't. You hate to pronounce those words, I can see that. Um, is, it, is it rather right or is it rather wrong? <laughs> <laughs> um, rather right? Rather right. Oh, so thank you, it's a good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Now, so do you see that it means that, that it is an obligation? I don't see it as an obligation. Well, you say we feel obli obliged, we feel obligated. Mm -hmm. You see a connection with obligation? Are you also belong to the uh, complicated uh, yes. people club? Yes. Well, I wonder why you make so life so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> What's at stake? <laughs> can you imagine your students doing the same? Yes, I can imagine. Uh, why? Same. Why would they do this? They have already. Uh, what, how old are they? Well, I'm not. Uh, well, they are uh, 10, 10 to twelve years old. And already they make their life complicated like this. Sometimes. Wow, <laughs> poor you. <laughs> Why did you do that? Is there something at stake here? Yeah. Maybe if I was complicated. Oh. We may complicated oh, you should listen by our thinking or you should not listen to the thinking. Or? You should listen to the Buddha, no? Yes. <laughs> Pronounce his name uh, three times a day. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> okay. Good. You like our little dialogue? Yes. Well, why? Because it um, <coughs> it takes the um, it takes the emotionality yeah. of your um, from what people say say um, take it away to uh, and you know oh, I can't explain it. Separate, you mean, separate the um, emotional uh, behavior, the, the content? And it analyzes the words and the... Um, well, you have to be a bit fast because we have to... to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Okay. Well, yes. Whatever. Okay. Whether you find it interesting. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, we have to stop now. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. But maybe just, uh, let's take uh, three minutes just to have some some feedback, some like a meta discussion like uh, we said before. Yeah, just yeah, pick if pick some, something that you that raise your interest, something yeah, that maybe a critic that you didn't like that you want to say now. Or uh, yeah, I thought it was very interesting that um, it was obvious that people were struggling with um, the, the language being not primary language of folks. Mm -hmm. And then I thought this is actually a lot better because it forces people to come up with yeah. more simple answers. Yes, I rather agree with this. Uh, usually people use language as an excuse that they are confused, but it's not that. They are confused already, and language, for, uh, well, not mastering the language forces them to use more simple words. I think <coughs> it's, it's rather a good thing. Yes. Yeah? Uh, what's your name? Happy. <coughs> Happy. Because you didn't, we didn't hear you. So what did you think of the sex or something? It was complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it was made complicated. Sorry? I, I told you. Yes. Always, there was always a new problem. Okay, there were too many problems.
but it's okay. No, it's not okay. I complicate. Uh, do you understand? Yes, it's a little white. There was always mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. awesome. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure I follow you, but uh, yeah. I have a, a question. Yes. Um, the emphasis today was on people that are having difficulties uh, taking life simple. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have also. I did not choose it. <laughs> no, but I have this experience with Bramifé, it's, it's the same, but always uh, it's going uh, fast. And most of the time, you have this thing about people are not clear, and I'm saying more, it's more complicated than what I was. I mean, more complicated, and no, I do not agree. And um, is there also, are there also workshops? when people are chosen to take life too simple. <laughs> so <it's laughs> about that. I, I, I met some such people, yes. yes. And it's true that it's much easier for them. It's, it's more. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but yeah, they're, they're not a very, uh, uh, a very. Uh, they're not so problematic then, I no, suppose. No, no, no. Mm. It's just smooth. Yeah, they change their minds. It's just simple things. People. Really love it. And then, do you have a, is there a problem then? Yeah. Yeah. That was what I was thinking. Well, then, well basically, there is, always, there is always a problem. You know, and so what would it be then? What well, would it, be? Um, it can be that it, it might be superficial, for example, or that, that, that it's, um, maybe it can also be that they, they're not persistent enough, you know, they want mm. to get rid of your, uh, you know, sometimes it, it's too simple, you know, and you people just want to. Uh, they just they don't want to, to be questioned too much, so they they give they up. Agree. Yeah, so they, they agree. Give in. Yeah, they agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So also you have to 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 do it. But do you think that the group, for example, will say that you you say yes because you agree really, or because you just want to please a uh, juror mm -hmm. or you want to get rid of? It? So all. The, I mean, basically, you always find problems, you know? Okay, mm -hmm. but was because I, I had this... Uh, it's uh, an answer to my question. Thank you. Yeah, maybe maybe one thing. Sometimes with this kind of cross-questioning, and I think it's very interesting, I have the feeling that you're forced into, like, a false dilemma, you know? False dilemma? A false dilemma, because... Um, well, you real dilemma. Well, 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 yeah, of course, a real dilemma, but, like you said, you... <coughs> You give us two options. Yes. Um, uh, you usually, there are three options. Uh -huh. There's uh, uh, for uh, an alternative question, but of course, they are not only. It's uh, rather yes. I, I always rather yes, rather no, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I give three mm -hmm. possibilities. Yeah, but sometimes the, the the question that you formulate, for example, I, I say something, and and, and um, on the basis of that, you give me a, you give me a question, and you ask for my answer, and I think that on the basis of your question that you re didn't really get what I was trying to say, but you want me yeah. to answer. Yeah, this is where I make the videos. So uh -huh. After sure. you can write yeah, and say, okay. hey, Jerome, you know, at minute 12, point that, look what you did. And then, then I'm thinking, uh -huh. but I want to clarify, but if I try to clarify myself, you say, no, 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 answer the question. And I think, yeah, that's not what I was trying. I, I cannot, the question is not relevant to what I was saying before, so I don't want to answer this, this question. Uh, you're fighting. Well, um. <laughs> Is that a kind of fight against? <laughs> no, it's a, no, I, no. It's just I think. Uh, it's a, it's Do you think I treated you unfairly? No, 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 no. I don't think. Uh, well, you know, when you see people say, no, 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 no. That's too many knows. Yeah, it's too many. She knows the trick. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but this is not about my feelings or that I'm hurt or anything. Not at all. It's no, just no. a methodological question. I think it's an interesting methodology, and I. But, but I think it is a. But what do you do when you misinterpret a person because you don't give them the um, the, the, possibility. the possibility to explain himself further? Yeah, you want to you want to force uh, them to take position. I'm right. First, I can uh, I can smash my uh, my own face. <laughs> uh, the second, I uh, you know, but usually this go uh, that happens. It's, true, it's rare, but it happens. But usually it, it gets self corrected by yes, the group. Yes, by the group. But because uh, you you forget, I think, the fairness of the group. Yeah. And also, when you're on, only looking at uh, the person who is asking you, because it's already in town, but you forget that yeah. you're also sitting here and seeing probably the same thing as the person who's asking questions. Ask a question, yes or no, and you, 
you answer something completely different, like, what do you want, coffee or tea? I said, well, I, I might go for a french fries. Uh, then the group knows what's going on, and then it's really uh, helpful that we have someone who is speaking also a little bit for the group, mm. that already knows yeah. that there is a... If, if, for example, I would have made such a mistake, which can happen, then uh, whether... If you, if you trust, because the problem is you don't trust the questioner. But if you trust the questioner, uh, truth will uh, like reappear at some stage. After a question, I will say, ah, okay, now I understand what you mean. Mm -hmm. Or it would be someone in the group saying, I see a problem, I have your own, now oh, you do this. And um, the truth will uh, emerge at the end. Yeah, and also it might not be so enormously uh, a problem that sometimes... But I think, I, think this is a very, I think this is a very useful method. Mm -hmm. So I'm not about, I'm not, I'm not arguing against the method, I'm just saying what do you do in that kind of situation. So, so no, I, I think the method is very interesting. Of course. <coughs> yes? Anybody? Can I tag on to that? Sorry? Can I tag on to what he was saying? Yeah, uh, next, it's only a question of time. I don't know if, uh, because it's, uh, what's the next uh, workshop? Food. It's a food. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. I spoke now. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of writing against the method that you use in the philosophy of children bits, because there's lots of Socratic dialogue that has that more um, assertive <coughs> approach. That you the more what, sorry, the more assertive approach, where you are trying to force him to not mm -hmm. be elusive. He cannot mm -hmm. be elusive. Mm -hmm. You're, you're forcing him into a, a close, uh, a mm -hmm. close question, mm -hmm. uh, uh, questioning. So he has to do yes or no because he has to, you know, he has to come forward. Mm -hmm. He has to. Mm -hmm. in a yes or no? I don't know. What? You can also <laughs> choose I don't know. <laughs> Yes, but then there would be another question, of course, that would still try to get him to, to, well. to choose sides. Because if there's no choosing sides, there's no real interaction going on. But if you do the philosophy of children, there's lots of writing that says you, you can never do what you do, which is to rephrase someone's mm -hmm. words and then give them back to them. You would say, that's, that's just not done, even in sessions of mm -hmm. one hour. You always but step back. If there is rephrasing, it has to be from the table, and not from the question. <laughs> You're very fast. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So if there is to be rephrasing, it should be from another person at the table. Mm. Or well, but did you, do you notice that when I rephrase, I, I, I always ask, uh, do you accept what I, uh, my, uh, my reformulation? Absolutely, but your reformulation is always funneled, and it's, it makes it, it's makes it in a, in a, in, yeah, it's a more narrow uh, opinion, which is great, because I, because you need to, mm. to choose, choose eyes, and yeah. it's being very elusive, so you need, to, you need to pin it down, because otherwise there won't be any discussion. Yeah. Yeah, and what you're saying is that this would be forbidden with children, right? No, I'm just saying because this might be interesting to people because he's interested in methodological aspects. Uh -huh. There's lots of literature that says no, and lots of approaches that say no to rephrasing from the question because it because it is very intimidating to the person who's trying to broaden.